Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Energy and Environment Special Meeting, Thursday, June the 24th, room 1010 at about 10 after 1 p.m. in the afternoon. I'm Councilwoman Jan Perry. Um, why don't we start with item four first? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Ralph, you're to CLA's office. Item number four relates to the Wastewater System Debt Program Credit Facilities Report. This item was held over from your meeting last week. You had issues with regard to the process employed for selecting credit facilities. Okay, just make it easy for me. Tell me why we're in this situation. We uh, started negotiations with the banks that have uh, we have existing facilities with. One bank in particular on the uh, Series 2008 was very resistant about negotiating with us. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, wouldn't make a commitment to us. It took about three months and we finally decided we were running out of time and decided to uh, canvas other banks and went out to other banks to, to replace them. So one of the reasons that was cited uh, for their not being able to commit to us was at the time we were negotiating the headlines about the city's mid-year and the deficits. Okay, and wait, the, slow down a minute. Let, let, let me... Um Help me rephrase it. All right, the, the CAO's report, and I interrupted you, you in the beginning. You're from the CAO's office. Right? I'm sorry, Sarai Baga from the CAO's office. Right, okay. Now your report noted that the city's line of credit has become more expensive because of fiscal uncertainty and the Department of Water and Power's initial withholding of the power revenue transfer. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and that's noted in the report itself? Yes. Yes. So can you talk to, tell me a little bit more, tell me more detail on that particular issue. Well, at the time when we were in discussions with that bank, they brought that up specifically as a concern with their principles as to why they wouldn't be able to commit to us. And they basically wanted to see how that issue was going to pan out, but there was no uh, time frame that they could specify as to when they would be able to make a decision. So we came to the conclusion that we could not wait for them to make a decision because it could have gone against us. Um, and so the, the DWP incident did cause delays in, in coming to a conclusion on, on that particular credit facility. Results of delays and increased costs? And increased costs. In the area of what? In the fees that we ended up having to, what we're recommending in terms of the fees for the facilities. Fees that we actually had to pay. That we will be paying in fees. So we will be, be but just so I'm clear, and I don't want you, I want you to explain this to me again on the record. The city of Los Angeles will be, will be paying increased fees for the facilities that we're going to use because of the delay in the power revenue transfer by the Department of Water and Power. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Now you're sitting behind her, shaking your head. Do you want to say something? You can come to the microphone and identify yourself. I'm Marilyn Garcia, the city attorney who's working with the CAOs on these matters. Um, isn't it true that the, that the fees increased also because the market in general has increased the banking fees? Yes. However, when we initially started discussions with uh, that particular bank, they had presented an offer at 75 basis points, and over time it started going up. Because of too so much time. Up. Okay. So it's a, yes, it's a All combination. Right. So, so the final answer? Your final answer? That we, we've ended up having to pay. We will be paying increased fees. Because of? Because of what went on with DWP, in addition to other factors. Why don't you, can you just spell it out for me? Well, this is for the record. It's not for me. So somebody else listens to it. You said because of what happened with DWP, specifically the and what? And the delay in the, in the transfer, the power transfer. And the uh, combination of what? And other events that were going on in the market, such as it's been going on for the last two and a half years, where it's been more difficult to get credit facilities from any bank. Is it possible General. for you to break out for me, uh, maybe from a proportional share, how much of the increase is due to the delay in the power revenue transfer, transfer versus, you know, market conditions? That I wouldn't be able to specifically calculate. Okay. They, they could perhaps outline the total increase in you know, in, in cost of the city overall. Uh, this item is in council tomorrow, Madam Chair. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you could have that information available. At the yeah, time. that's a very good suggestion. Um, it, it will be in council on Friday tomorrow. So when you come tomorrow, please have an answer to uh, the question that the CLA has put on the record, okay? All right, we're going to move this without recommendation. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, what do you suggest we take next? Three? Item three. Three? Like, okay. Item three. 
Item number three relates to DWP report and owners relative award of two agreements relating to the acquisition design, engineering, construction of the Haynes Generating Station. Okay. CAO and DWP. Okay. All right. Who's going to speak first about the need to repower the Haynes Generating Station and uh, whether or not it's going to be cleaner than its previous operation? I'm Nazi Batarse from Engineering Services Division, Ali Waram Power. Pull the mic closer. Nazi Batarse, Los Angeles Department of Waram Power, Engineering Services Division. And uh, two units at Haynes, uh, units five and six, they're 300 megawatt each. Uh, they're steam generating units, and they're pretty old. It takes 14 hours to get them started. The new units are more efficient. They're cleaner in emission, and they respond in 10 minutes. Okay. What are the specific services the department is seeking under the design-build contracts? Uh, my name is Dawson Dong. I'm the project manager for the Hings uh, Unit 5 and 6 repowering. Um, the specific service provided will be uh, uh, provide the power island equipment and as well as the finished, uh, furnished uh, engineering procurement and construction for design build uh, for the, uh, the balance of plant equipment and the installation of this uh, power island equipment. Yeah. What's the estimated cost of the project and how, how do you intend to fund it? $129 million. It's in the multi-year budget. And how long is it going to take to complete this project? Uh, the project, uh, the, uh, the contract itself takes about 26 months. So the contract itself could be lasting about four years. Okay. Now, your report notes that the uh, repowering project is needed to comply with air quality regulations and to follow the principles of your adopted 2007 IRP. Just give me a few uh, bullet points on how this uh, is going to, this uh, compliance will be achieved by the repowering. We have a settlement agreement with South Coast Air Quality Management District to repower. Settlement? Yes. Okay. And that is to repower Haynes Generating Station mm -hmm. by 2013 mm -hmm. and also Scatter Good Generating Station. Okay. All right. And the second part is for meeting our renewable portfolio. We are uh, getting some wind power, and you have to react to the wind. So what happens is when the wind is down, then the generating stations will pick up the load. When the wind is up, the generating stations will go down. Okay. All right. Let's uh, move this without recommendation. Okay. Thank you. All right. Like two, uh, two. Yeah, let's do two next. Item number two relates to the Department of Water and Power's report relative to the amendments to the Emergency Water Conservation Ordinance. We have staff from DWP and the CAO's office. Um, why don't you give me your amendments and tell me whether or not they're in line with Professor Bardet's study and uh, his recommendations to alleviate the water system blowouts. Is that directed to DWP? Yeah. Okay. Jim McDaniel, Senior Assistant General Manager. Uh, uh, for the water system, Department of Water and Power. Uh, we believe that these recommendations are directly uh, in line with the recommendations uh, from Professor Bardet. Uh, he did uh, attend the, uh, L the uh, Department of Water and Power Board of Commissioners meeting, uh, and the, the commissioners asked, asked him directly that very same question, and, and he responded in the affirmative that, the, that this was in line and that he thought this would be effective in uh, reducing pressure fluctuations uh, in the water system, which were uh, that they had attributed some of the main breaks to being caused by pressure fluctuations. Um, what types of testing uh, is the department going to conduct to uh, make sure this this new this new and very simple approach will work? Well, we're going to be installing uh, additional pressure monitors throughout the system that have the capability of measuring. Um, smaller uh, transient pressure fluctuations. Right now, the kind of pressure uh, measuring systems that we have are designed to, like, turn pumps on and off so they don't capture uh, uh, small changes in, in pressure. So we've got these advanced uh, metering things out there that will uh, capture those variations. Uh, and then uh, on the gross level, we have um, measuring devices throughout the system 
uh, where we can see the, the large uh, fluctuations, primarily pressure drawdowns in the morning when uh, the watering takes place. Mm -hmm. um, give me the key components of your amendments. Uh, the key components of the amendments are that we're going from two watering days per week for everybody in the city to uh, four watering days where half the city will be on f under phase three, which is the current phase. We're not proposing to change the phase. Half the city will water on Monday and Thursday, which are the existing days. The other half, uh, the even addresses, will water on Tuesday and Friday. And the CAO put together a rather nice little uh, table in their uh, presentation. I wish I thought of that. It's pretty slick. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Uh, tell me the current status of our water supply and uh, your assessment of the drought conditions. Okay. Um, the current uh, statewide, the state is still in a, a below normal year. Uh, we also, as you know, get water from the Colorado River. The Colorado River Basin had uh, a poor year this year. They're expecting only about a 70% runoff. Uh, statewide reservoir uh, levels are still below normal where they should be for this year. So although precipitation conditions this year are better than they, they were last year, uh, we need to continue to conserve water. Uh, Metropolitan Water District, who is our wholesaler, has not changed their allocation. They're still at a 10% uh, reduction allocation uh, going into this year. So we are recommending to continue with the same measures that we had last year. All right, now we've got a significant water savings. The drought is leveling off, but, you know, so got to keep it, keep our activity at the same level and, not, and take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, do you know or have you talked about in the department whether or not there's any talk about rolling back to phase two? Uh, at this time, we, that is not our recommendation. Uh, we have had a very good year this last year since June 1st when the, uh, uh, the ordinance was put into place. Uh, the city of L.A. has saved about 39 billion gallons of water. Uh, just to put that in perspective, that is enough water to serve the, all, this, all the needs of the cities of Long Beach, Burbank, Santa Monica, and Beverly Hills combined. So we saved enough water to serve all those other cities. So it's a significant amount of water, but it's going to be necessary that we maintain that kind of conservation going into this next year to uh, replenish our reserves. Okay. Now, the CAO, did you want to add something? Yes, I did uh, want to point out that it, uh, these recommendations, we believe uh, that the study proved this was one of the issues that will help in the, uh, the uh, pipe, water pipe situation. There are others that were corrosion, which I believe uh, the department is working on a, uh, and has some plans to make some um, uh, progress on the soil corrosion portion of the pipeline. Okay. All right, uh, we don't have a quorum, so we'll do this without recommendation. Go forward to council. Thank you. Thank you. In the end of one. Oh, I'm the, I'm the one. Oh, okay. I may or may not. Uh, we'll see how I feel. <laughs> they're not here. No, I mean, they're not here. I did this for them. I didn't need to be here. Okay. The only one who said he couldn't be here, and you understand, is Mr. Kirkcorian. So, well, I may just let it stay here. Okay. We'll see. Okay. Who's here from DWP for item number one? Why don't you read item number one again? Sure, certainly. Item number one, city control report relative to the DWP transfer and uh, the issue related to ECAP and its inability of the department to submit it to the council uh, uh, two months ago. Uh, we have staff from the city controls office as well as a consultant and department of water and power as well okay who's here from dwp don't come all at once also you're you're today's you're you are today's victim is that it <laughs> oh, okay well, right, madam chair. stupid okay uh when what would you like to add today i'm uh, joe ramala director of public affairs from the department of water and power um I was here today actually to address any questions you had on outreach regarding the water conservation ordinance, but I was also asked in case this issue came up yeah. uh, to speak and let you know. I know there had been communication that was shared uh, earlier today and perhaps uh, yesterday mm -hmm. uh, regarding our participation today and our readiness to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, we, our, our folks would like to be able to present a thorough and complete response to the issues that were raised on Tuesday, mm -hmm. to the issues that were raised in the controller's audit. Mm -hmm. um, they are working on that report and mm -hmm. expect to have that report to council and to you next week. All right. Why don't we, why don't we just 
when – give me a date by when you will come back to committee with a report, because I don't want to waste everybody's time today. I was told next week. I can get a more specific date for you. Yeah. I want a specific date so we can set a meeting, so we can come in here in the committee, make a report in the committee. So I'm not going to go to the council floor before I have it come to committee and have a pointless free-for-all with no framework and no structure, because that's what it's going to be. And, you know, I appreciate the fact that you came here today. But, you know, this still feels like, you know, we're playing hide-the-ball or something like that. And I'm not blaming you. Okay? But you give me a date by when the report will be done, and it's going to come back to committee. I'm not going to refer this on to council. I mean, one thing you know about me, and you take it back to the guys, you know, I mean, I can sit on this till they rot, okay? So I'm serious about they better give me this report. Understood. All right? Or it's not going to be good. Okay? Yep. All right, so we're going to hold this in committee, and uh, Mr. Romalo is going to give us a date. Can you give us a date, Mr. Romalo, sometime today? You can call Mr. Catalano or Mr. Prieto and tell them the date by which the report is going to be issued so that we can calendar it, get the notice out now. And I actually, I'm probably going to do it in a manner so that the rest of these council people, at least Mr. Kerkorian had an enormous interest right. and a long list of uh, questions he wanted to ask. So I think what I'm going to do is try to calendar it so I can make sure that he's here uh, so we can knock it out and uh, then go to council. But I'm not going to take it straight to council. Understood. That's a waste of everyone's time. I understand. Okay? Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. That's it. Go to, sit on it. And um, let's see what they do. This okay. is the time for public comment for those wishing to speak on items that are not on the agenda. Uh, this is the time to do it. Otherwise, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much.